Hi, David Erdos with a new poem from David's Covid. With thanks to my friend Renato Reversi for pointing out that yesterday I had numbered the poem incorrectly. It was not the 88th, it was the 89th. This is poem 90, Unmasked. And so from June the 15th we're land drones. And thus it is written. Faceless in the crowd and on tube trains, they will reduce us to a suspicious look or blank stare. How many instant romances will blunt, or for that matter be sparked by eye dazzle, when the computer hum beneath chaos douses and blurs true words care? With the unknowing looks we'll exchange and the prospective conversations part stifled, how much information about our hidden hearts will be shared? For face coverings will soon shroud as something dies between people. Just what will we bury as we recede above still untested ground, undeclared? Certainly the particular beauty and form of a face. But then I must ask, do we only ever really hunger for bodies? A society sees our faces as extras, speaking as they do or did of the soul. So clearly it's the body they want, as we fuse and form now together. By using these uniforms on our faces, the long idle surplus will be that much easier to quantify and control. And yet lurking under these plans will be the secret schemes of such workers. Sitting on the trains, marred, near mindless, and dreaming, no doubt, of the closeness of her cool, curved breast, his hard hold. Conjectural carriages, then, sped on their phallic run towards cities, as the masked Oompa Loompas shuttle forwards to woman and man the machine. And we, or rather they, are reduced beneath the disguise of protection. We will just be the clothes we are wearing as they become carelessly unstitched at the seams. Walk down the road, though, this week, and you'll see no masks. Just abandon. Cummings in his goings made sceptics and conspiracists of us all. Occasionally there's a mask, usually seen at a bus stop. No doubt the stance of some older rebel still keen to avoid their sad fall. And this is where the mask makes its mark, it becomes both a shield and an emblem. Not against unknown virus, but against everyone else. Man made fools. And yet everywhere else, standards slide, and we risk a form of extravagance through precaution. What with the choreographed supermarkets and the confused, distant children dancing in separate domes of their shaping inside the bewilderingly empty schools. By dividing us up into zones, the government masks the message. Then making it up, improvising, children at play as they yank the string someone's pulling and dangle us all near the front. They do this sort of thing in all wars, as they did to my Hungarian grandfather. Forced to the battlefront as war fodder, he became a faceless form whose soul sunk beneath the waters of blame, usually assigned to all of those primed for murder. The oxygen they inhale needs no filter. They have a secret source that tastes sharp. Walk down the street. The police aren't wearing masks. Now it's fashion, a form of personal statement or status in which those who do need it have their mask strap flicked like a bra. It's a susceptibility test as a dystopian play casts its chorus and we are forced within wrappers to fatefully seal our own scars. David Erdos, June the 6th, 2020.